I'm so excited that you're here with me. Today we're going to be talking about planner burnout. It's something that a lot of people experience, but really there's no resources for you how to cope with it, how to prevent it, ways to get around it. We're going to cover it all. All right, so you've had your planner for the first of the year. You bought one. You were ready to go. You were hitting the ground running. You were doing great, and it's now getting to the point where you're getting exhausted. You're feeling that planner burnout. You're struggling with what to do, how to use everything. So today we're going to talk about exactly how you can prevent it from happening, but if it does happen, overcome it and move forward to make planning the most successful version of you. The first thing I would like to say is that it doesn't matter what level of planning you are, what type of planner you are, what planner you use, what style, it happens to everybody. You plan long enough and sometimes you're just like, I don't want to anymore. I've done it. I'm done. And it can be very common. I think one of the ways, one of the bigger ways to prevent planning from becoming that is really if you're using it as a tool. In my opinion, and the way that I use my planner, it literally is to help me be more productive, to keep track of things, and to ensure that I'm doing the best that I can with not forgetting and making sure I'm focused on my task list and really understanding what I'm doing every day. So if you're looking at your planner and you are feeling overwhelmed by it and you have a really, really busy week and chaotic week and you're trying to figure out how to juggle it all, that's when you need to use your planner to your advantage, not to your deficit. So don't look at that as being a hindrance to you. Look at that as being something that is helping you to achieve greater things and really help you navigate that week and make it the most successful week it possibly can be. Another thing that I think happens constantly, especially for those planner babes like myself who enjoy decorating their planner, is a lot of people can look at that as a non-useful way to spend your time. They think that you're just putting stickers down and you might as well just scrapbook and that's really just a hobby. It's not a productivity. And that is so wrong, so far from the truth. What's really happening is that you are decorating that planner and it's making you more likely to go in there and actually use it because you've now put something down that's meaningful and you want to go look at it throughout the week. There is certainly nothing wrong with adding some decoration to your life, whether that be in the form of a sticker, a stamp, or you color it in. Maybe you're really talented and you can draw. Whatever the situation may be, there's no law that says it's not productive unless it's black and white only. Like that's not a rule. It's just not. So don't feel bad or negative and don't let anyone discourage you. If you are a highly decorative planner, decorate, decorate, decorate. Don't let anyone discourage you otherwise. Another reason why I feel like a lot of planners do get this burnout is sometimes it's overwhelming the amount of stuff we feel like we need to buy and what other people are doing and we want to constantly keep up with the Joneses. So I'm a prime example. I like all the things, all the things. It doesn't matter where it's from, who it's from. I want it all. I want every planner ever made. Like I just do. I just love them all and I just love all the things. But realistically, I use a handful of planners and a handful of planner accessories and that's my day to day. And if anything happened to the rest of it, it would be disappointing, but I'm still going to function fine and my planner life is still going to function fine. And I think that it It's a blend of not being so overwhelmed with trying to get all the things that you stop planning altogether because really you're just sick of shopping and really embrace the fact that you only need what you need. Determine what that is, buy those things, and then be excited for those who do invest in other things, but don't feel concerned that you need to have all the same things that those planner babes got because you don't. It's just what's functional for you and really focus on that. Another reason why I think a lot of planner babes get discouraged and get burnt out is because they're planning so many things and maybe that's not really, maybe they overdo at first. So I cannot remember who the person was that said it. It was another planner YouTuber, but they said, hey, when you're new, 
try to keep it simple, as simple as possible. And I completely 100% agree with that because a lot of times what happens is like you're like, oh, I'm brand new to planning. I'm not a planner. I really am bad at scheduling things. I forget things all the time. So I'm going to plan my faith and my meals and my fitness and my wellness and my, you know, life and my business and my kids and the list goes on and on. And you add so many things to that, that you're just like, I can't even keep up with it all. Like, I don't know how to plan for all the plans. And then maybe you have like 10 planners and you're like, well, I don't need 10 planners because I really never planned for my kids before. And I'm not sure how to do that. I think that that's a common thing, taking on too much at once and not letting yourself ease into a planning momentum. So once you get your groove, once you get that planning momentum, then you can start incorporating some other things into it. I will tell you that cleaning schedule is something I still struggle with. I've been trying to implement a new version of it, but I just, it didn't work for me. I'd write it down. It just wouldn't work for me. I wouldn't check it. I wouldn't look at it. It would just be a gone thought. And it was like a, you know, waste of my efforts. Well, what happened was I was feeling like I, I was feeling as though I've made an error that I wasn't working it right because I wasn't doing the things that I said I was going to do. And so therefore I was disappointed in myself. And that can kind of start the burnout too, is when you're feeling like you're super disappointed, but you don't really know, you know, why, or maybe you're like, oh my goodness, I failed because I didn't do the things that I said I was going to do. You can't be that mindset. It's a, it's hard to make, keep up with everything. So don't feel that way. If one week you don't follow the schedule that you had in your planner. The biggest thing is to make sure that it's functional for you. Now, I know a lot of people, depending on what kind of planner style you are, if you're not a super decorative planner, or maybe you are a super decorative planner, and what you really want to do is just focus on doing those things, like really, that might be the outlet for your creativity. You might have you know, a really hectic, crazy life. And that's the way that you can get over and kind of enjoy some of that productivity at the same time. You know, I said it earlier on in the video, but don't let anyone discourage you of that. But also we don't schedule time to plan. Like if you're really a functional planner, if if planning does help you to be more productive, it should not be looked at as a negative thing. If you're trying to sit down and get your life together in a moment in time, So what you need to do is make it a priority, plan in it to help it grow and make it productive and make it a priority. So when you sit down to do it, you're really staying on task for things. I think another big reason why people get planner burnout is that they are putting things in their planner, then really not paying attention to their planner and then forgetting things. And they're like, this is why am I doing this? If I'm going to just forget everything I just wrote down. Try to keep it in front of you. Try to keep it open. Try to keep it fun. Try to keep it something that you're wanting to go look in. And that, for me, is the decorative part of it, is what makes it so much more fun. But also, I am, pen to paper is the only way I remember things. So, I mean, I have a good memory, but it is not the same as when you have something in front of you, you're like, I need to do that later, and you write it down and you do it. And that is a skill. I will tell you people, it's a skill that comes with training and time, and it's not going to be easy at first, but it's definitely going to be something that you can overcome as the tide rolls on. Another reason I think people get planner burnout is that they break their planners between multiple planners. And while I am one of those people and support it, if you're using tech and you're using a planner and then you're using another planner and information that you need to be all in the same place is scattered about. It's not going to help you be more productive. It's going to make you feel lost because you have so many bits and parts of information throughout totally different areas of your life that are not going to help you to be more productive. So for monthly scheduling things, for scheduling things that might be really far out and you want to make sure that you're not going off the schedule with other things, really spend time in those in the same planner for this and use one monthly overview, You whether you have a big desk calendar or even a wall calendar. like Just use something that's an overview so you can really see what is going to help you to be the most productive possible and not feel overwhelmed because you have information in every which way. We're going to get to those moments where we're feeling a little burnt out, but then you just need to look at it and say, let's go ahead and reevaluate what I love about it. Let's do something fun in it. Let's make it cute. Let's do a challenge maybe of a certain planner spread or a certain type of planner and really, really make it fun again. 
maybe you need to buy a new planner. Maybe that planner that you have is not really working for you anymore and you need a new layout or a new style or just something fresh to look at. Sometimes for me, because of the type of planner that I use, I can pull pages out and move them around. Well, maybe you need to do that. Maybe you need to just refresh the whole thing and make it look new again. Whatever it is, really look at what it is you're using your planner for and what it's intending to accomplish and the big why behind it all. And once you really reevaluate those things, put those in motion and just restart from like day one. Progress, not perfection. So don't feel like you are making any types of long answers in how you're doing it as long as it's working for you and you like the way it's working for you and you're not feeling concerned about anyone else. And that brings me to my final, final thing, which is don't compare yourself to any other planner person. I might use five planners. You might use one. You might feel like you need five planners because I use five planners, but really it's whatever works for you. So don't ever compare. Everyone has their own purpose and their own journey and their own life and their own thing. And you do not want to look at someone and think you have to have that same thing because it might seem like it works, but in your life, maybe it just doesn't. And vice versa, maybe someone only uses one planner and you're like, I need 10. What's wrong with me? It's just the way that it is for you. And that is all that you need to worry about is not what everyone else is doing, but just focus on how you can better yourself and what you can do to improve your life, not everyone else's. So, all right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't get planner burnout, and I cannot wait to see you on the next one. Again, if you're not a subscriber, I would love for you to join this. And if you are, glad you're here supporting me. If you'd like to see more videos like it, please click the link on the screen. All right, everyone, have a great day. Talk to you soon.